If you want to be a part of the conversation before it happens here on YouTube, click that link in the description to join the free Courtside Financial Discord. What's going on, everyone? My name's Obi, and welcome back to the Courtside Financial Podcast, the podcast where we talk about business and technology. I tend to focus on the EV industry in China, and I do sometimes expand to talking about the industry globally. Today, we're going to be talking about a plethora of topics, lots of focus on Tesla today. Uh, we're going to be talking about Xiaomi's success a little bit, and then we're also going to be talking about our golden child or my golden child. You guys can pick whatever you want, but I like Neo. Uh, I'm a Neo bull. I'm an investor as well. So it's going to be a super interesting, super insightful episode. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Click the notification bell icon and leave a comment down below. Our goal is to get to 10K before the year is over. Uh, without further ado, let's get into today's episode. So let's dive into what might be the most fascinating corporate tech dance of 2024, Tesla's recall saga. We're not talking about a minor hiccup. We're talking about a software earthquake that's been shaking the foundations of the electric vehicle industry. So to further paint the picture, we'll start with the numbers game. Tesla had 1.2 million vehicles affected in total. And here's the recall breakdown. Of those 335,716 were imported and locally produced. They were the Model S, the Model X, the Model 3, and the Model Y. These vehicles had production dates from July 16th, 2023 to December 14th, 2024. And there was also a previous massive recall in August, 2024 for 1.68 million vehicle. Imagine you're backing up your high-tech travel Marvel and then suddenly your backup camera decides to ghost you or your steering assistance becomes as reliable as a drunk GPS navigator. Welcome to Tesla's latest software adventure. So the specific issues are basically just a tech nightmare We'll list them out for you. There was a reverse current problem that can damage your power supply on the main computer system. And some of the potential consequences that came along with this were rear view camera malfunction, increased risk of vehicle crashes, and limited steering assistance. But here's Tesla's magic. They're turning this potential disaster into a massive remote tech support operation. Over the air updates are fixing these issues without customers even stepping into a service center. And if you can't update, they'll replace your entire computer system free of charge. This isn't just a technical issue, it's a massive reputation and financial issue as well. Each recall costs millions of dollars in uh, potential repairs, lawsuits, and of course, brand reputation damage. Yet Tesla's handling it with the agility of a tech company rather than the slowness of a traditional auto brand. So we talked about Tesla's new Model Y uh, about in the Chinese market, it's finally available in North America and Europe. Tesla's new Model Y, as we discussed, isn't just an update. It's something that's making everybody on Wall Street take note. The new Model Y's EPA range increased to 320 miles, up from 311. Some new features include surround ambient lighting, enhanced seat functions, second generation suspension, and advanced noise reduction hardware. The pricing strategy here is also pretty interesting. The new Model Y is going to cost 12k more than its predecessor um, they've got the new long range all-wheel drive version that's coming in at $59,999 let's just call it 60k and interestingly enough they're simultaneously selling old and new model so in my opinion it's pure marketing genius tesla is basically um, offering its customers a choose your own adventure type of thing if you want the latest tech pay up if you want a more budget friendly option we've got you that's what tesla is saying with this update now the cybertruck saga is perhaps the most interesting story in the automotive industry since the ford pinto tesla's cybertruck is currently going through a sales apocalypse they had projected annual sales of 250,000 to 500,000 but actual 2024 deliveries were approximately 40,000 and the estimated real order conversion was two percent there's also a regulatory roller coaster we've talked about this time and time again about how hard it is to get this thing um, approved 
for the roads in China. Well, same story in the UK. In the UK, in fact, a cyber truck was actually recently seized by the police for being essentially illegal to drive. This isn't just a minor bureaucratic hiccup. It might be foreshadowing a fundamental design failure. And then don't even get us started on the recalls with this thing. The cyber truck had seven recalls in 2024. Lots of quality issues, rust after 381 miles, sharp edges resembling mobile weapons, production line workers being shifted to the Model Y, and industry analyst Trip Trowdry is not mincing words. He's suggesting that Tesla needs a smaller, more affordable version of this thing. Current pricing between 80 to 100K is a serious barrier to mass adoption, adoption Excuse me, when it comes to the Cybertruck. Some good news for NEO today. Um, it seems like they're rewriting the rules of the infrastructure playbook. Neo just reached a battery swapping milestone. They hit 100,000 battery swap services in a single day. Um, the current infrastructure count and breakdown is 3,6400 ,000 total stations, 955 highway locations, and 80% plus of highway power from swap services. This isn't just a charging network, it's a mobility ecosystem that's decades ahead of traditional automotive thinking. Just when we thought the automotive world had seen it all, a smartphone company enters the ring and they're actually doing pretty good. That's right, we're talking about Xiaomi. Let's talk about their SU7 sales performance. December sales for this thing were 25,815 units. They outsold the Tesla Model 3, 21,046 units, and their starting price on it is 29,640 US dollars. This vehicle comes in three versions, the standard, the pro, and the max. So they're not just competing, they're making a statement about the future of mobility. I have to take my hat out to off to Xiaomi, even though they are one of our competitors, I try to stay objective. For the broader market context, I feel like it's important to understand that this isn't just about cars. We're witnessing a fundal, fundamental transformation of transportation uh, infrastructure, energy consumption models, technological innovation, and consumer uh, technology expectation. The lines between tech companies, automotive manufacturers, and mobility solution providers are blurring at an unprecedented rate. The EV market in 2025, it's a high stakes battleground for um, innovation, regulation, and vision. We're seeing traditional boundaries uh, dissolve with tech companies becoming car manufacturers and vice versa. Of course, I'm long on Neo, but it serves me to watch um, the industry with a broader view so I can know what competitors are doing and I can weigh that against what NEO is currently doing and how they are performing. So as always, this is never investment advice. It's a financial story unfolding in real time and of course with real global implications. So anyways, that's it for this installment of the CF podcast, the Courtside Financial Podcast. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Whether you're new or returning, click the like button, click the notification uh, bell icon, leave a comment down below. All your engagement really does go a long way in helping this channel to reach a broader audience so that we can serve more people and reach our goal of 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Thank you all so much, and we'll catch you in the next installment. This is Obi signing off. Bye.